Assalamu alaikum. So we're with uh, Robert Davila. How are you, brother? You're on the Dean Show. Did you, did you ever hear of the Dean Show? Yeah. Have I you? Watch it a lot. Yeah. I do watch it a lot. Mashallah. So, so we were talking about about your amazing story. You had so much of um, people that were really amazed by some of the things that you you went through, and then through all of that, you ended up not some years ago accepting Islam. You got you got in a in an accident where you got paralyzed from your neck down. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And then you were you were sharing you were sharing with me uh, a little while ago how you, you your mother was Unitarian Christian and to, to kind of fill us in on what we were talking about. When I was in the hospital, I remember praying, and um, I would pray directly to the Creator. You would pray directly to God, to the Creator, God Almighty. Yes. Without anybody in the middle. No intercessor. No intercession. No intercessor in the middle. Just directly to God, the Creator. Yes. And that's what my mom, my mom also does not believe in. Um, okay, I would say my mom is a Unitarian, but she refuses to accept Islam. Uh huh. She's a Unitarian yes. Christian. Yeah, I think so. So this was back in early 2011. You accepted Islam. Yeah, it was around uh, Octoberish. So you you came from a, from a from a, a staunch Christian Unitarian Christian background. Yeah, we were um, okay. Um, when I was a kid, I did my own thing. And um, I remember my friends took me to a, oh gosh, what do you call it? It's kind of like a, okay, um, youth group? A youth group, yes. Yeah. And um, as a kid, I thought, that, I thought it was just so dumb and I didn't get it. And um, so I quit really um, going there. I only went once or twice, and the guy just wanted to hang out. Uh huh. He didn't really. He didn't teach anything. He just. It kind of sucked, really, in the language. You're talking and about then, this. There was a. That was the Christian uh, youth group you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy there was, the the guy there was more interested in being friends with us than he was teaching us. About faith or anything. About basic yeah. things? Yeah. So I got mad and um, for the longest I, I wanted, for the longest time I said I was atheist. You said you were atheist for a long time, for the longest time. Yes. Uh huh. All through my, all through high school and whatnot, and it wasn't until I got um, paralyzed that I started praying and whatnot. So did you feel that you, did you become, or you called yourself an atheist because you didn't have the answers that you were looking for? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much? Yeah. What, what were some of the questions that you had? Like, um, like the meaning of life, the Where meaning we come from. Why are we here? And like, oh, every time I sit up with some and ask, no one took me serious. I mean, those are serious questions that many people are not reflecting upon. Meaning of life. What's the purpose of life? Why am I here? Where am I going when I die? I mean, those are just intelligent questions. You are far more intelligent than many of the people out there because you were asking the right questions. Thank you. Yeah, and um, I used to be I used to be scared to die and whatnot, but no longer am I scared mm -hmm. because I know why. 
I know my way and whatnot. Tell us about this. There was a friend of yours who had this amulet that he, pa he passed away before you, and then someone brought his amulet crucifix to you? Yeah, yeah his sister did. Actually, he had a, he had a crucifix on the wall, and um, he would always have a, okay, a pastor would always come wrong to him, but they would never speak to me, and I never understood why. And uh, um, he had uh, liver cancer or um, cirrhosis, which is pretty much liver cancer. And um, on the day of his uh, surgery, he got a donor. And on the day of his surgery, he died unstable. And his sister gave me that to remember him. And um, for the longest time, I never knew what it was about it. And, um, okay, I had the crucifix on the wall. And uh, one day, in a, in a dream, Muhammad came to me and said, um, this is just a man. Take this down and, you know, if he was God, he wouldn't eat or go to the bathroom as you do and whatnot. And from there, I woke up and I immediately accepted his song. Wow. So that that was you're saying that uh, Prophet Muhammad came to you in a dream. You had this cruci you had this crucifixion there, and something along the lines of 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 uh, that God didn't send. Um, Say that, say that again. How, how was it that uh, Jesus wa wasn't God, that God didn't send messengers to be worshipped or to only worship God, the Creator? Yeah. How, ex something like that? Yeah. Uh-huh. It was very exactly like that. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. That, that's, go I, ahead. I wish my speech, I wish my speech was never affected so I could talk to you better. You just had. You also just had a stroke, right? I think I did. Yeah. In my sleep, because uh -huh. uh, some months ago I could speak clearly, but now my speech is like so uh, inhibited. It's uh, infuriating. Let's continue where you were talking about the dream. So you had a dream. All this was leading up. You were, you uh, you had some friends who were Muslim at that time and they were kind of answering your questions. You had your friend that died. Uh, you had yourself looking for answers in life and then the dream happens? Yes. So how did you take that after the dream? After you did that, how did, how did you, um, you came to know that this was, did anyone tell you that this was Prophet Muhammad in your dream? No, it no. was like I did a lot of contemplating, and um, I spoke to brothers from Egypt and um, a brother, a brother from England, for a while. And um, for the longest time, I never even said anything. You never said anything for the longest time. Yes. How did how did they determine? Or how did you determine and find out that this was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in your dream? When I was told. That's what you were told after you gave him the description to uh, to uh, people more knowledgeable. Oh no, I I knew in my I knew in my heart that it was him in the dream, but I didn't know. I just thought it was a dream until I spoke to other Muslims. Oh, after you spoke to other Muslims and they said this was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon yeah. him. Yes. And pretty much uh, in the dream summarizing, he was telling you not to worship that crucifixion or not to worship Jesus, but just to worship the God of Jesus, to worship the one God. Yes. This was, this was the main message of that dream? Yes, sir. That makes sense because that's that pure monotheism that came throughout history, throughout time. 
that God Almighty, out of his love, he sent messengers. He sent these prophets to call people to worship one and only one God and to do good deeds to be morally upright. This is that same message that's been there since the beginning. And did that make sense to you? It was, yes, it made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. so, because, um, okay, there was a questionnaire on my, um, that I found online. And all of the answers I answered were, it said, if you answer these questions with these answers, you are a Muslim and you should accept Islam. And that was in early 2011. And um, for the longest, I was contemplating. And then finally, after the dream, I accepted Islam. And then I spoke with my friends, and they told me, go ahead. To go ahead and to uh, take the Shahada? Yes. Yeah. So that was in 2011. Now we're in 2020, going on 21, and you're still a Muslim. You're still in Islam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> MashaAllah. And I'm very delighted and happy to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so you've you've actually memorized a lot of Quran, also. I heard. Yeah, I tried to. Mashallah, this is great. How how do you for for people who are out there, you know, taking life for granted, uh, people who are out there ungrateful for many of the simple things in in, in life that now um, taking things for granted, not being grateful for many of the gifts. Uh, what message do you have for them? And no matter what, don't give up and always rely on God. Mm -hmm. Always rely on God. Yes, because even you may be stripped of everything, but there's always something worse. There, You may be stripped of something, but there's always something worse. Yes. Yeah. That reminds me of the, the hadith where the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said that always look to those who have less. And that's what I do. Yeah. Because now you actually, in a sense, some, someone can have all the money and all of the material things, but if the, at the end their heart is not in a state like where your heart's at, where you finally found the purpose of life, why you've been created. Now, at the end, the person dies in that state you know, without the guidance of their creator, and they all they did was worship money and power and fame, that's that's a worse place to be in in life. It is. And, um, and I felt that because uh, in the place I was, before I was here, there was uh, two guys that were my age that were much worse than me. They, wait, they, they, were, they were what? They, they were what? They were much worse off than I had it. All guys, like, they, they were there at the at the uh, nursing home. Yes. They were worse than you. Yes, they were. Yeah. And they were both in my Uh huh. And they were, they were worse than me, and um, it gave me hope. But really, all I would do was spend days praying. Mm -hmm. You would spend days praying? Mm -hmm. Still keeping your Salat, huh? Yep. MashaAllah. I, I, okay, I tried to fast you before, but I couldn't because my I had to take pills and had to have water, so I couldn't really fast. But I still observe Ramadan. You still re observe Ramadan? Yes. MashaAllah. This is this is amazing. So you were you were also telling me about your your family. Some of them because they got caught up with much of the media hype and the misinformation, they didn't take so well to you accepting Islam because they were thinking that oh now 
a lot of the negative things that are associated, terrorism and all this other nonsense that's, a tri that's associated with Islam. Have, have they kind of cooled off yet? Well, um, yeah, but only because I told them, only because I told certain people, the people I was closest to, that I was no longer a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I had to. Yeah. Or they would never see me again. Oh, uh, so that was that was your some of the family members. There. Yes. Yeah. I see. Mainly, my father and my sister. Uh huh. Yeah. So how's your relationship with them now? Now it's very improved. Very much better. Yeah. But I haven't seen anyone for months. Because of the quarantine. Oh, because of the the quarantine? Yeah. Yeah, they won't let nobody come visit? No. Nope. No, nope, nobody can come visit, huh? Nope. Not no. since uh March the middle of March. Yeah. And it's supposed to last through July. Uh-huh. Because um let me see. Was it maybe on Friday? We had to take the test for COVID. Yeah. But uh, it didn't bother me because um, I've had a camera stuck in my nose before. Yeah. I heard uh, the story also that one day you were reciting uh, some Quran and then someone who was passing by your room heard you and they were very shocked and surprised and then a conversation began began that was with uh with uh, a muslim can you tell us about that do you recollect that um i barely remember but i do remember because uh -huh. it was long ago and the guy was from africa he was from where africa africa so you're <laughs> you're there he that was the last place he expected to and the last person he expected to find reciting Quran. Yeah. Yeah. He was very surprised. I uh -huh. his name. I wish I remembered his name. Yeah. Amazing. Is there so much of my story that uh, Numan Ali Khan got wrong? And I wanted to uh, straighten it out, but I uh, couldn't. Yeah. So now's your chance. Go ahead. Tell me if any, anything that you want to share with us. You can go ahead. Anything that that uh, you you felt was very important. Well, okay. I'm not a farmer, nor what, nor did I have a genetic disease. Okay, so you weren't a farmer or didn't have a genetic disease. No, and I do I would have to watch this video again. To be sure. You what? I would have to watch his video again to be sure what he said. Yeah. So, but but the correct thing was that you actually had a, you had an accident. Yes. It was a car accident? Yes. And then you broke your neck? Well, um, okay. I didn't see one fracture. What? Where my, my, um, my cranium? They yeah. attacked from my spine. Yes. And it was the um, putting it back together that paralyzed me. Mm -hmm. Putting it back together. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, I had to wear a halo for, um, let me see, three or four months. And it was, man, it was crazy. I remember. All I can remember was um, for two straight weeks, I was crying and whatnot. And finally, I, I was one day praying and crying, and I figured, you know, I'm not gonna get any better. And people are just gonna dislike me even more if I'm bitter. So don't be bitter. Don't be and, bitter. Uh, so from that day, I've not been And there's so many people that are pretty too. There are, and I, you know, I try to tell them differently, but nobody wants to listen to me. 
Yeah. Look to those who have less. I mean, don't be bitter. You talked about that. That's the advice. What other advice before we close would you like to give to the world? Mm. From all your experience mm -hmm. now and... Well, I can think of right now. Mm -hmm. Just that, um, you know, make the most of what you can. And always remember, always remember that no matter what, you're just a human and you are going to die. So live your life and, um, let me see, treat others the way you would want to be treated yourself. So be kind to others. Yes. Be a good human being. Yes, sir. And, and never lose hope in God Almighty, the Creator. Never. Yes. Never. Yeah. You know that you know the, there's a, a beautiful statement from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, that once a person is dipped in paradise just for a second, then they'll ask, "Have you seen any hardships in this life?" Uh, I'm sure you've heard. Have you heard of this hadith? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Islam gives that so much optimism and hope because this life is short, is transitory, and there's something better waiting for us. And when finally you're exposed to that, then all, all, of, all of the things of joy and happiness and everything will just overtake a person and he'll forget about or she'll forget about all of the drama, pain, and all of the hardships that they went through in this life. And may God Almighty Allah, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, reunite us in, uh, in Jannah, in paradise. And easier, Alhamdulillah. E, e, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and if I'm ever, you're in Texas. Yes, sir. If I'm ever in Texas, inshallah, we can meet in person sometime. Okay. Yes. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, brother. Thank you for sharing that with us. May Allah bless Good you Lord. and reward you. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the deal. This is the deal.